How was your morning? Monday. Joker. Mm. Oh, how is your morning? How do you feel? Good. You feel ready for the I'm ready. big interview? It's still gotten better. Yeah. I'm Leah. I'm 29. I was diagnosed with ALS in 2019. I know that she has always wanted to be dancing at her wedding, so it was a bit disappointed and, and that it was no, still a very beautiful event. A magical, mm. very special evening. Mm. A lot of people know ALS as maybe Lou Gehrig's disease, because Lou Gehrig was a very famous baseball player who had it, I think it was in the 1930s. And what's pretty incredible is the life expectancy is still the same as when Lou Gehrig had the disease. So ALS, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is a neurodegenerative disease that leads to the paralysis of muscles. And so it's different for every patient. But eventually, a person can no longer walk, talk, breathe on their own. It's devastating, because your hopes, your dreams, they disappear. You have to rethink about what you want for life, what your future is going to be like that your future might be much, much shorter than you thought. Um, so it's a total shock for you and for those around you. I've been married to Leah for two years in one day. Yesterday was our anniversary and I've been trying to support her as the best I could for the past three or four years that I've had to live with this disease. There's a stereotype that it's more older men, but in reality, 45% women, 55% men that have it. Of those patients, 90% are like me. We don't know what causes it, but 10% have a genetic mutation. And so that provides actually a key to potential treatments. I think people may not realize just how little we know about diseases like ALS, Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's. But really, there are still fundamental gaps in how we understand that those diseases progress. And I think a lot of us are here at the Institute because we have family members that have some of these diseases. And, and we're passionate about it because we want to solve it for people we care about, but also for everybody else. You know, for me, I have uh, a number of family members with Alzheimer's disease and a number of friends with ALS. The Institute's mission, especially as it relates to neurodegeneration, you know, what we're looking for here is to make sort of zero to one innovations. We, we don't want to do incremental things where we target symptoms. What we're looking to do here is make transformational medicines. You know, genetic medicine is basically doing everything that a lot of the medicines have done for years, but very intentionally focusing on treating and curing diseases at their foundational and root level. For certain patient populations who may have certain neurodegenerative diseases, let's say Alzheimer's, we can go and precisely map in their DNA what is causing that. And then what we can do is one of two things. We can either go and treat the downstream effects of that, so that's more of treating the symptoms, creating treatments, or we can go upstream of that to the DNA itself, where that mutation is, and fundamentally go in and correct it, correct that mutation to reverse the root cause of the disease. And the word that I'm using here intentionally is cure that disease. If you figure out which of those genes are important, then you can actually take some of these newer strategies that we have today, things like gene therapy that people have heard a lot about over the last couple of decades, and you can put functioning copies of those genes potentially back in to cells in people's body and have them make a functioning version of those genes. And so what we're looking at is drugs where you go to the root cause of disease that let you do that, where I give you one shot and you don't worry about ever developing Alzheimer's disease. That would be pretty amazing, I, th I think. And, and most of us, I think, would be extremely excited to, to join clinical trials, maybe, or, or to take that medicine if it's approved. Developing the tools, developing the medicines to have immaculate precision and accuracy is the largest obstacle we're dealing with at the moment. Once we can actually get them into your body, making sure that they are getting into the cells we need and actually acting at the genetic level to reverse the effects that we want them to reverse. That tells you precisely how hard it is. It has to be precise. It has to be accurate. So I've been the, the renaissance of genetic medicine, and I do believe that genetic medicine will be the thing that changes the course of diseases like ALS. 
Like what, what we make here is, is hope for people with neurodegenerative disease. If people you know, are out there, they're dealing with things like this, they should know that there are a lot of really dedicated people at places like Lily that are working incredibly hard on, on solving problems for them. I've started a group called Her ALS Story, and it's a group that brings together women that were diagnosed under age 35 so that we can both have a network to lean into and also advocate for better, more accessible treatment options together. Um, so I feel very fortunate because I have such a great support system. That's why I'm able to continue spending my time doing things I love with people I love. People and I travel all the time. Yeah, I still have a beautiful life. And I'm very hopeful that promising treatments will come out soon so that I can continue to could to live.